Today, we're finally able to talk about the brand new Oppo Find N2 Flip. This is the flip phone that's going to be challenging some of the other options available on the market in a big way from Oppo. Not only do we have a bigger display, larger battery, faster charging, also a larger front-facing display that is multifunctional, but also kind of feels, well, feels like a small phone on the outside of this flip phone. This is TK and this is the N2 series. We're going to focus mostly on the N2 Flip, but this is the N2 and this is the N2 Flip. Let's talk about the brand new N2 Flip from Oppo. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so they're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here it is, the brand new Oppo Find N2 Flip. This is the international packaging that's going to be available again. Uh, the Find N2 was not available internationally, it's primarily in the Chinese market. This one will be. So it is also featuring Hasselblad technology, similar to what we saw with the N2. Overall, when we're looking at them, essentially is we have a foldable smartphone, again, opens up into more of a, a book style experience. And of course, when you're closing it, you have a very nice large display that's very nice for single handed experience. And this obviously is the bigger guy, even though this is very compact to what we got here with the N2. Now the N2 Flip is very similar, large display on the front. Now the N2 is very similar, large display on the front. And of course you can unlock the device with the fingerprint scanner. And of course we have access to, not only accessing to the notification panel, uh, also accessing some toggles, the ability of using the front facing camera, doing a whole bunch of different things. We're gonna talk about all of the functions of that display. But of course, this one, when it opens up, it actually mirrors a standard phone. Again, a large format phone that still has a large display, dual cameras on the back, a single camera on the front, and of course, the functionalities of ColorOS 13 running on Android 13. And as far as what comes in the box, we pretty much get the phone. As you can imagine, there's two. There's going to be two different colors of this. And so I have the actual, the black one looks really nice. And it's a little bit more of a starry black. Let's go ahead and get that to actually uh, materialize. Hopefully you guys can see that. And of course we have that nice little shape of the Oppo logo here, which is a little bit different. We don't have Find N here. We definitely have Oppo in a very nice uh, reflective material here. In the box, they're also including the charger. Now this one is a 67 watt charger that is going to be able to charge at 67 watts. The biggest difference though is that the Find N2 Flip supports a 44 watt charging. So that's gonna be the maximum we can get. But the charger is definitely capable of providing us faster charging in case you have a device. Now this one obviously is a European plug. They do include the USB-A, the USB-C cable as well that's included in the box. And they actually do include a case, which is a little bit different. <laughs> I know we don't really typically hear these things, but they do definitely include a clear case in the package so that you're not gonna be left out in the cold when you first get or pick up your N2 Flip. So you definitely get a case. And Oppo was also kind enough to include a nice little protective case with a loop that you're also able to use with this device. And of course, it's offering us some nice protection for the device with a nice loop to be able to protect it. So obviously there'll be other cases available, but this is gonna be the portable PU case available for the N2 Flip. Now, the last thing I do wanna also share with you guys is they also provide a pouch, uh, a nice little uh, leather pouch that's uh, monogrammed with Oppo. Uh, of course, it's very nice. It does buckle up and you're also able to basically put your device, protect it entirely, so it fits inside it here and you can close it and then it obviously is protected all around. Uh, it's a different style of carrying it. Uh, it does have some pockets at the top to be able to hold your cards and so on. Uh, for me, it's probably going to be more so on the case, but it definitely is a very unique, a very custom experience for the Find N2 well, Flip. We're going to talk a little bit about as far as the specifications as well as the design. First and foremost, the display that we have in here is a 3.26 inch display. It's a large display that gives us the ability of actually seeing what's going on on the phone. Again, when you unlock it, you have the ability of going into photo, portrait mode, and video, and that's going to be using the best cameras on this device. It's going to be the primary 50 megapixel, that's the IMX 890, that's going to be the main sensor, as well as the 8 megapixel ultra wide, the IMX 355. I feel like the ultra wide is going to be good, but I think the main sensor, the 50 megapixel with Hasselblad is going to be the best experience here. Um, we do have a selfie camera inside, that's a 32 megapixel camera, that's the IMX 709, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we have the access, of course, to weather. You can customize that directly when you first set up your device. Now, I did skip over uh, the, one of the options, which essentially is the calendar. Unfortunately, I do have some things in there that I can't share. Uh, but we do have, obviously, the ability of setting up some timers in there. We have access also to some buds. I did connect my OnePlus Buds Pro 2 to it, and that makes it very nice because I'm actually able to toggle between the different options in here directly into it. Last but not least, we have a built-in uh, microphone recorder here. And what I like about this is because of the way the placement of the casing in here is when we flip it over to the other side and you'll notice that it actually does uh, support orientation, 
The microphones on both the top and the bottom of the phone become front facing us directly and that's going to give us the best experience. Now those widgets are not the only thing we have access to. We have also the ability of accessing toggles, Wi-Fi, the ability of turning on, turning off Bluetooth, airplane mode when you're traveling so you don't have to even open it up, flashlight if you want to be able to turn that on as well, as well as battery saver. And of course, last but not least, the ability of checking out also and looking at all of our notifications that come on the device. So you can actually interact with them and of course respond to some text messages with pre-built uh, canned messages as well as emojis. Uh, if you receive a call, you're able to uh, answer the call and answer it and work with it directly. If you're playing music, it's going to play there. A lot of the functionalities that we have directly within the notification panel are going to work really nicely here. And of course, when we open it up, we're greeted with the 6.8 inch AMOLED uh, display here with LTPO at 120 frames per second. So you're able to configure it to run at 120 frames per second refresh rate. It is a 1080p panel uh, and it has a peak brightness of 1600 uh, nits. On the front facing display it has a peak brightness of 900 nits. So really good for outdoor visibility. And here it's going to be superb for outdoor visibility with HDR10 plus on the internal display. Definitely very nice. I'm pretty sure you guys are interested to find out what is the configuration that we have. It, this is the Oppo Find N2 Flip, the global edition, as you can see here, global color OS official version. Uh, it is model number CPH2437, powered by the Dimensity 9000 Plus. That's gonna be the processor in here. 6.8 inches on the display, 4300 milliamp here battery, definitely bigger than some of the other options. Eight gigs of RAM with an additional eight gigs of swap files directly into the system. So we can definitely get up to 50, well, 16 gigabytes of usable RAM. Uh, the storage that I have on this model is 20, 256 and it's going to be very nice. There are going to be two different colors. There's the Astro Black, which is what I have, and then there's the uh, Moonlit Purple, which is the other color available. Mari Silicon X is present in here with Hasselblad technology. Front facing camera, as I mentioned, it's present in the center. It's going to be a 32 megapixel camera sensor. It is running on Android 13 with Color OS. 13. Now, with all the optimizations that we have with ColorOS, it looks perfectly fine. And of course, we have access to the app drawer. Uh, the notification toggles are there. If you're playing a song, it's going to basically bring up a, well, a music widget present there. You're able to customize it. You can go in there, do all the different customizations that you want, log into your account and customize, of course, the options. Wallpapers and style, home screen, lock screen, all of the different things that you have in there. They look really nice. The biggest difference I will probably say is this, when opened up, looks like a regular smartphone. And this, when opened up, is pretty much a small tablet in your pocket. So that's the biggest difference between these two. The experiences may be slightly different, but they're both great foldable devices from Oppo. And as you can see here, the difference is very obvious uh, what you're getting there. But when you close it up, you get a very nice, a small, more compact uh, display. And here, you definitely have a much bigger display, but still very nice and very compact as far as the configuration from the N2 Flip. Okay, so we talked about the features on the display on the outside and how do you configure all of those things. So we can go in directly into the system. Uh, fingerprint sensor, by the way, is present on the right side, volume rockers next to it. Uh, we have obviously the speaker, the earpiece on top with the married with the bottom earpiece to be able to give us stereo speakers, dual SIM card, and of course 5G, USB-C connectivity, no headphone jack. Uh, on the side, it's pretty much clean. On the top, we have the microphone, and of course, on the right side, fingerprint sensor that doubles as the power button and the volume rocker. If we go into the configuration straight into the settings tab and then go into the foldable features, we have a couple of options in here. We have cover styles, the ability of customizing the experience in here, and you can change it from the default one. Right now, what I'm using is the one that matches the internal display, but I can change it to be basically different animals. You can go directly into your album and then customize and then load up something that maybe let's say you downloaded and you'll be able to share that directly, either a video that you took or even content that you've been able to download that works there. And of course, you can edit it and go customize the different color aspects and customize the options in there. And the always on display, you can go in there and customize all the different options you have there, uh, the text, the Bitmoji, and of course, the custom clock faces that you're able to do there. Very nice, very simple. The widgets are the ones that are the things that we looked at before. We have camera, weather, event, timer, wireless, as well as recorder. Now, wireless earphone and recorder were not available directly before. I had to add them, they were under the more. And hopefully in the future, we'll find additional ones. So those are things you can customize so you can add them, reorganize them and move them in the order that you want. Last but not least is the quick reply option. By default, these are the pre-canned messages that you're able to use to respond. You can add additional ones, but you do also have access to emojis if you like to be able to respond via emojis. Uh, always on display and clock style. Those are the things that you can also customize for the always on display. And it looks really nice. So what I'm showing you guys right now is a quick sample of some of the things you could do when it, talk, when it comes down to text messaging on this device. You can actually not only receive the notification, respond to the notification with text and of course, uh, or emojis directly from the display. Uh, you can also use it to play content. Let's say you're listening to music. It's going to definitely look really nice. The only thing you need to do is go in, launch music. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the volume real quick. And we're going to go ahead and play a quick song. This is Armin Van Buren. I'm going to close it. And what you'll notice right away, and I'll go ahead and let it flip, is that we have that nice little widget 
that's present at the bottom. We can pause, skip forward and come back. Of course, I wasn't trying to actually swipe up. And if I unlock my device, now I'm able to actually kind of, let's let focus one more time. I can swipe through and do other things with it as I'm uh, working it. If I want to be able to use it for photos, I can jump in, it'll open up the camera. And the camera is really nice. Right now it's facing me this way, but let's say I sit down and I extend it upwards. It doesn't turn on the internal display. It keeps the camera positioned. And now I have a nice little Hey, video that's recording right here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do just to kind of show you guys what it looks like. Now I have it set and I'm going to go ahead and start recording and I'm going to put the video right here. So this is a quick sample of the front facing display uh, recording on the Find N2 Flip. What you're getting here essentially is how you'd be able to use it by yourself to set it up, prop it up, and of course record video on the go. Now we're recording it obviously in, uh, there's two different ways of doing it. You can either record it in portrait mode or landscape. You just need to turn on the phone to its side and it will record and save it directly to your device. And we're using the best camera on this device, which makes this even more compelling. Now, the nice thing about this is that you're also able to actually access the gallery. Let's go ahead and bring this down. That was the video that we just recorded. I'm going to go back. That was the picture I took. And of course, you can also look at some of the other pictures that you took before. So this is just as from last night. I took my wife out for Valentine's Day because I'm actually going to be at the launch event for this around the, the basically Valentine's Day here in the US. Uh, we decided to have our Valentine's Day a little bit early, but you can definitely appreciate the colors and the representation of all the things you could do. It's a beautiful, large display that is multifunctional, and I really like everything that we're able to do here. Once we're done, we can bring it down, go home, lock the device, and you're pretty much set. Uh, this makes it so much more functional for us because at this point, we don't actually have to open up the phone for everything that we need to do. Notifications are going to be something that you can do on the outside playing music, taking pictures and so on, everything works great. Now, one of the other things we can also do is customize the volume rocker function is so that I can actually double press the volume down and that turns on the camera automatically without having to unlock it. So I'm able to switch between photo, portrait, but you notice in this mode, we don't have access to the gallery because we didn't technically unlock the phone. Once you're done, swipe it down and it takes you back to a locked lock screen. The next thing we're gonna talk about, of course, is going to be cameras. What do we have in here? Again, 50 megapixel and an eight megapixel ultra wide on the main and the back, and of course, a 32 megapixel on the front. When it comes to photo, well, video, we'll focus on that mostly. We have 4K, uh, well, 4K is gonna be the maximum resolution. Uh, in the current version that I have, and I feel like it's more so uh, a functionality of software maybe, uh, that I'm not able to select 60 frames per second at 4K, but I'm pretty sure that the Dimensity 9000 Plus can carry it. So I would probably chalk this off to a software update more than likely, but uh, overall 4K 60 should be the maximum on the main sensor on the back, and 1080p 60 frames, well, 1080p 30 frames per second is gonna be the main uh, experience on the front. Uh, from what we get in here. So 1080p and 720p on the front facing camera. But if I decide to, let's say, want to record video, let's say we start up the experience this way and I want to flip it to the front and I want to show somebody on the other side what we're doing. You notice that little display here that we have in the front. Now we actually can actually see what's going on from the main camera. And let's say I'm using it by myself and I want to be able to use the content by myself. I can just go ahead and prop it at 90 degrees. You notice it has a flex mode experience where the controls kind of sit on the right and the camera moves this way. It makes it really functional for us to use more of a camcorder style. And I'll show you guys a sample of that as well. Uh, and of course, I can just prop it on the table and then use it. And I can still see what I'm doing on the front, although the controls aren't here. And here we have the ability of jumping on all different modes in here to be able to change. It really makes it very functional to be able to use the external display for what it's intended for video, portrait, or even photography. And it, of course, everything runs the way you're expecting it. Now, as far as modes, since we do have Hasselblad, we do have the pro mode. That's going to be the Hasselblad pro mode built in here with the colors. Uh, we also have the ability of jumping into panorama. We have movie mode as well for video recording, and you can definitely see this is similar to what we've seen before. And uh, well, actually, let's go ahead and go back from that one. Last but not least, we also have slow motion, time lapse, sticker, text scanner, as well as XPan, and that was, of course, what we've seen before. This is uh, some of the stuff that we get directly from Hasselblad built into this. And of course, you can take the images, and I'll share with you guys a little bit about that gallery in a second. What I want to definitely enjoy here is I want to share with you guys a quick sample of the video and the audio from the front facing camera and the main sensors on the back on the brand new Find N2 Flip. Now, the good thing about this is this video is going to be recorded while I'm in the UK. Again, this is that whole hybrid where I start the video here, but some of the samples are going to be for my trip to the launch event. So normally when I'm doing the audio test on the phone, I'm usually in my backyard and now I'm actually in London and you may recognize the landmark behind me. Either way, this is the front facing camera on the brand new, uh, well, Find N2 Flip. It's a little bit longer, we'll call it the Flip. Uh, this should be a good audio example of the front facing camera on this device. Of course, we're gonna do a video as well from the back facing camera, but I'm actually gonna use it in clamshell mode, which means I'm actually gonna use that display on the outside because that's the best way to record it. Now I'm on the other side of the bridge. 
you can see right there, um, I'm actually using the phone in flip mode. So meaning I'm actually clamped and I'm using the front facing, the main camera, the 50 megapixel camera, but I'm actually using the display. Makes this a much smaller thing to carry and not even have to worry about holding it the, the length uh, actually that normally would come with a standard phone. But the biggest difference is I actually see myself and I can see myself very clearly. So here is an audio sample of the main sensor on the back in closed mode on the brand new flip. Now, as we typically do on this channel, we like to listen to Alex Grindo Jumbo by NCS Release. This is going to be our, our sound test. Now, I'm going to put the sound volume all the way to 100%. And of course, I'm going to be playing it with the stereo speakers that we have in here. Let's go. Jack it up. Definitely looks really nice and you notice that although this is not a, the built-in camera, when I actually tilt it up, the controls on the display change. The, the video kind of fits more into a square shape and of course the control drop a little bit more making it easier to control. So I can actually use it more of a 90 degree angle. And then when I open up the phone, it opens up and it looks really, really good. So that's the audio experience, definitely loud. And I will say that this is actually one of the loudest uh, flip phones that I've actually had a chance to check out as far as the performance there. Again, the display is 6.8 inches uh, and it's gonna be 120 frames per second. You have the ability of using, again, all the customizations we have directly within OPPO system. And of course, customization specifically made for the foldable features that you have in there. But before we jump into games, I do wanna talk a little bit about Geekbench as I'm sure you guys are wondering what is the performance or what should we be able to actually expect? Now, the system here runs in two different modes. There is performance mode and then there's standard mode. Standard mode is more of a throttled experience where the processor runs at, I would say, probably 80, 85, maybe 90 degree, 90% 90 of the performance there. And for that, you're running it, you're gonna get 924, the 3277, and that's in standard mode. But when we turn on the gears and we turn on performance mode on the Find M2 Flip, we're able to jump over to 1343 and 4285 on the 9000 plus dimensity from uh, from MediaTek, and that's definitely very much appreciated in the performance. Speed test. Now, I will hopefully add another screen here. I'm, I'm hopefully be able to do more screen tests with uh, speed tests with this. Uh, my speed test was done here in the US on AT&T, uh, and I was actually showing a 5, 5G capability with 73 down and 17 up. Uh, believe me when I say that this is actually pretty good for AT&T speed, but I will definitely get a chance to test it out a little bit more, and I'll put more of that content in here so you'll be able to see other examples of the speed tests that I was able to do. But let's go ahead and jump over, of course, to gaming. Uh, the game launcher is pretty much standard what you'd expect and see from uh, from uh, Oppo. Very much all the configurations, uh, Call of Duty Mobile, Asphalt, PUBG, and of course, uh, all you have to do is go ahead and launch the game, and you notice right there the, game's, uh, the game uh, system turns on and it runs beautifully. Um, although we have 120 frames per second, I haven't been able to find a game that runs at 120 frames per second yet. Most of the gaming experience that I'm seeing here is pretty much moderated around the 60 frames per second. So Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG Mobile, those are going to be the main, uh, the highest resolution, well, the highest refresh rate that we're able to get on this device. Uh, the configuration for the game system here on the left, you're able to turn on performance mode, game mode. I love the fact that we have the system uh, information that gives me the ability of seeing what my frame, where my refresh rate is on this device and it gives us the ability of kind of seeing that even when we're recording video as i'm showing you guys right now uh, that's some of the game experience here very nice and very very uh, fluid uh, even though this is a foldable display this is definitely going to be one of the best experiences you can get on a flip phone that folds well it's a smartphone but it actually is a flip since it actually does close in a clamshell style. Now, before we go too far, I'm pretty sure you guys wanna see some experiences or at least some comparisons to how does this actually look like compared to the Z Flip 4? Because again, this is the only other option on the market right now that we're able to get internationally. Now, from a size comparison, because I'm pretty sure some of you guys are interested to see is how does this compare to the Z Flip 4? It is slightly bigger on the display, a larger battery, faster charging on, the dis uh, on this device since we can go up to 44 watts. Uh, we have a 4300 milliampere battery here as opposed to what we get with the Z Flip. But again, overall, the performance is gonna be comparable to some of the other OPPO devices we've seen before. Uh, the other thing I would love to say also here that is different than the Z Flip is that the phone actually closes all the way flat. There is no gap, as I'm showing you guys with that video, where the Z Flip, there's more opportunities for dust and particles to go between the display. This one does not have that. The other thing I also want to talk about is the fact that is that fold that we have in here or the crease that's inside here is a lot less pronounced than what we see on the Z Flip, which it's still there. You can definitely see it depending on the angle of the light that you're hitting it. But when you're looking at it straight, of course, it doesn't show it. It barely feels when you're moving your finger across it. That's the difference between the Z Flip and the, well, the, uh, the Find M2 Flip. 
This one is definitely much easier to configure and it actually has a different configuration on the hinge mechanism that allows it to go flat and nothing goes inside. So no dust buildup in here when you're using this device. Now, the biggest thing about this device is that this is going to be a global edition, which is the Find N2 did not. So the Find N2, you had to import it if you wanted to use it. You to, and of course you had to uh, sideload the Play Store, get Google Play services running there. Out of the box, this is gonna have everything that you need and it's ready to go. Google Play services, global uh, ROM uh, launching on here. Everything that you have is really optimized for the international market. Um, as far as forming, uh, you know, uh, sorry, as far as app compatibility, there's no difference between this and your standard smartphone. It has a very much a similar, uh, basically aspect ratio that you're used to seeing. It's gonna fit into like say gaming controllers and so on. It's really gonna give you that pretty much experience all the time. The one thing I will say is that this is more of a flip phone. So the space that it holds inside of your pocket is very small and it's gonna be that type of an experience in your when you're using it. So if you're comfortable with that experience, which I know a lot of people that are as well as myself on this one, um, I have to say that it actually looks and it feels very nice. And of course, there are other color options and case options in case you'd like to customize your experience. Now, when it comes down, obviously, to the camera experience, as I talked to you guys before, I feel like that the main 50 megapixel camera sensor on the back is going to be the breadwinner on this. And that's mostly because that's the best sensor. With Hasselblad and Opal processing and, of course, the Mari Silicon X, you're going to get some, well, some exceptional imagery and, of course, video taken, this, especially in low light experiences, very much what we saw with the Find N2. The big thing I will probably say is you're seeing images and pictures from different places as because again, I started with this in the US, but I'm actually gonna take a lot of pictures and videos as I land in the UK ahead of the launch event. So you have some more experiences as far as performance and of course, traveling with this device. Now we have eSIM support as well as the ability of using a dual SIM in there. So depending on what you'd like to be able to use, that's gonna work for you guys really well. Uh, the images and the videos as you're looking at right now are definitely fantastic. I love that where Oppo took all the functionalities and the appeal that we saw in some of the other generations that were available from let's say Motorola or even Samsung, and of course improved on that and put it in a similar small form factor that is very portable. That large display on the front for me is the killer feature that allows us to actually use and functionally use this device without having to flip it open every time I wanna use it. So again, if I wanna be able to answer phone calls, if I wanna be able to change the active noise cancellation on my earbuds, if I wanna be able to take video, voice record, check out my calendar, my weather, all of those things are built in here. I can even launch the camera and of course use it. I can respond to text messages, I can see my notifications, I can even turn on airplane mode directly from there. It's literally like having a small phone display on the outside part of my flip phone. So it's it's really crazy. I'm excited for this. Uh, I hope you guys are also as excited as I am. I'm glad that this is coming into the international market. I also hope at some point maybe Opal will release a version of the N2 or the standard foldable model that they have internationally. Uh, but from what we're looking here, the Dimensity 9000 Plus is more than capable of providing us everything that we need when it comes to performance. You're able to turn on performance mode if you want in the gaming experience or even in the system if you want to be able to do more productive things and you want to use the device for its full potential. Having that 44 watt charging in there is definitely very nice. There is no wireless charging. There also is no um, external display support. So you cannot plug this into a USB-C and project your display to something else. Unfortunately, those are not there. But otherwise, I think this is definitely very nice. Larger battery, larger display, larger external display uh, for a flip phone in 2023 is, I think, very, very exciting for the market. So let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the Find N2 Flip? And of course, if you're getting one, let me know which color you're gonna be picking. For me, I actually didn't know about the black one because I've always been very, uh, I like the purple color that I saw in some of the early uh, renders and stuff that we saw before. But this one's actually very nice. It has that nice little shimmer as the light hits it. It has a sparkle effect on the back of it. And of course, there's some nice case options as well. There's that pouch that I showed you guys. And of course, uh, the little flip case here with the little hoop on the side that makes it very, very nice. So. Thank you very much for the support. Like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you in the next video.